Yo, what up? It's Jersey Bay 93 In today's video, I'll be teaching you the controls for the off-ball system in NBA 2K25. You'll learn how to do one dribble pull-ups and special shot creator moves off the catch, off-ball post moves, how to use the slippery off-ball badge, and we'll look at slowing down backdoor cuts and how to use off-ball pests. But first, let's look at some of the basics. The first thing you'll need to master is using different speeds. Your walking, running, and jogging animations are controlled by your motion style, but your agility and speed rating will determine how quickly you'll move around the court. If you want to get better at creating separation off the catch you need to use different speeds that includes walking and jogging changing your speeds will also help set up your cuts better and can unlock quicker off ball speed boosts the left stick has control over hard and quick cuts but you can also rotate the left stick to do quick turns these turns will be crucial as we'll look at unlocking special moves later on in this video the first thing you'll need to learn is how to do an off ball speed boost to do an off ball speed boost simply tap r2 on playstation or rt on xbox and move the left stick left right away or towards the basket you don't have to move to unlock this animation you can trigger these moves from a pick or simply standing once you've mastered the timing of the off ball speed boost you'll need to learn probably the most crucial feature in 2k's off ball gameplay and that is the ready hands animation to trigger this animation all you have to do is simply hold l2 on playstation or LT on Xbox. This animation is a non-negotiable for shooters. You have to use this animation if you want to make shooting off the catch easier. Holding L2 and preparing your player to shoot makes a big difference because you'll start squaring yourself towards the basket, which will prevent you from shooting unwanted fade or catching the basketball and automatically dribbling, which will take away your ability to access triple threat moves. And if you don't know, the triple threat moves are one of the best ways to get to the basket if you have a low dribble rating. Another benefit is you'll start catching the basketball at or behind a three-point line so you're not taking long twos and you'll unlock those special animations we talked about earlier when added with the basics of cutting and off ball speed boost and then we learned earlier in this video by holding l2 you'll unlock special get open animations these animations make a big difference in creating separation from a defender and will give you the appropriate catch animation when using screens like flares pin downs or even coming off of a curl to trigger these animations all you have to do is hold l2 or lt and tap r2 or rt and move the left stick in the direction you want to go the animation your trigger is going to be determined based on where the basketball is but holding the left stick down or away from the basket will consistently trigger a back pedal and holding the left stick towards the basket will still trigger a cut towards the rim so if you hold this by mistake and you're trying to get to the rim no worries you're still going to get that quick cut i mentioned earlier that holding l2 will assist you in getting behind the arc so i wanted to do a side by side the left side i'm not holding l2 at all and the right side i'm holding l2 so as you can see the l2 animation plays a role in getting bird behind the line i want to add the earlier you hold l2 before the pass is made you'll catch the basketball behind the three-point line consistently now let's move on to the right stick off ball moves the right stick has its own set of animations to get open without the basketball. The direction to do these moves will be based on where the basketball is. So the direction to flick the right stick or move the right stick will vary. When standing or moving, flick the right stick up, down, left, or right to trigger a juke, a hard step, or a stutter. You can also rotate the right stick clockwise or counterclockwise to trigger step over spins. When you double tap or flick the right stick quickly in opposite directions, you can trigger more advanced fakes. The problem I've seen from players who try to use these jukes is they don't understand these animations are meant as setups. By themselves, they're easy to read, but when you add some of the other controls, then you can see how useful these moves are. Let's look at what happens when we add these right stick fakes with the L2 get open animations. And as you can see, we're getting better animations now that we're combining everything together because this is how the system was meant to be played. Now, I want to address a question that I got before I dropped this video, and that was how to use screens. Now, I'm not going to really go over this too much, but just from my experiment, holding L2 and tapping turbo for your off ball speed boost is the best way to navigate screens. You'll always trigger a animation that will maneuver around the screen and you'll get the appropriate catch animation since these moves are related to where the basketball is since the player is actually looking at the basketball you shouldn't be running around the court back towards your point guard or whoever has the basketball unless you're trying to score off of a dive now that's why when you try to go towards the rim and hold l2 you're going to enter into a post up instead since the game is assuming that you're just trying to establish post position now this is just going to be a call back to the beginning of this video i ask you guys to practice the left stick movement and just learning how to move without the basketball and practice different speeds jogging and walking and even going into full sprints because you need to learn how to 
transition between speeds. So as you see right here, you can do a lot of things with comboing the L2 button or excuse me, the L2 trigger and using the right stick. So like right here, this is a combo that you should practice where we do a fake spin out and then we pop to the perimeter. Now, one thing I want to explain quickly is shooting off the catch and understanding why a fade will trigger when you want to shoot a normal shot. Coming off certain screens, it takes longer to score yourself to the basket. So when the ball is passed to these shooters, they'll have to score themselves as they shoot, which produces the fade animation. But when the shooter is already squared to the basket on the catch, he'll go up with his shot as he normally does. So this again, shows the importance of using L2 when trying to shoot off the catch. So I really hope that helps anybody out there confused as to why the trigger and fades. But now let's look at some more advanced shooting off the catch options. When a shooter is about to catch or as he's catching the basketball, you can trigger your signature step backs or one dribble pull-ups. These animations can only be triggered on moving catches going across the basket and not directly towards it. For example, if you get a pass that's taking you towards the rim, a layup will trigger. So most side-to-side -side passes that don't drag you to the paint will allow you to access these moves. You'll also need to trigger these animations while you have momentum during the catch. To do this, simply hold square and move the left stick towards the left right or hold the left stick down and you will be able to trigger some of these special animations another option for shooting off the catch is using a pump fake one dribble pull up simply tap square and hold the left stick towards the basket and he'll trigger these step in shots this method while not super popular it is the best way to shoot once the defender bites on your pump fake since a lot of pull up animations are meant for the pick and roll or iso situations not when you're wide open Okay, let's finally talk about the slippery off ball badge and what it does. The badge is described as strengthens the player's ability to get open off the ball, which basically means this badge will activate when dealing with bumps or contact from a defender or when using any of the off ball animations we've previously shown. Let's look at some gameplay of this badge activating. So with Steph Curry and Drew Holiday, Drew reads the cut by Curry and denies it, but Steph has a legendary slippery off ball badge, so he's able to cut back towards the perimeter and Drew Holiday only has a gold off ball pass right now so you're going to see that he's going to lose these interactions with Steph pretty consistently as he should also i want to add if you have a higher badge tier getting open threes through this badge will be way easier if you master the animations compared to trying to just iso only versus an elite defender now if we take this badge off you'll see how curry struggles significantly to create space with any of the off wall moves versus drew curry is also much slower without this badge trying to cut towards the rim this badge is similar to box out beast where you'll get more favorable interactions if you have a higher tier versus your opponent if a defender doesn't have off wall pests he won't be able to hold you or bump you at all while a defender with a higher off ball pest you pretty much can't have any bump interactions with them so you not only avoid or you get more favorable interactions but you can create a ton of separation from those interactions like right here with steph curry by pressing the left stick towards darian fox and then away i'm going to create a lot of separation with this push off that's not happening against an elite off ball pest defender Recognizing who to use this badge against is important, but also knowing when to use it is just as important. Elite defenders will require you to use some of the off-ball combos you've learned and really dig into your bag to get separation because contact with them will slow you down, but try to get them to commit to one direction and then go the opposite way. But for non-elite defenders, if you see them playing you too close, go for a backdoor cut. If a defender is guarding you too tightly, they cannot defend backdoor cuts, and this is especially true for defenders that don't have a higher off-wall pest badge than you. Of course, we focus mainly on creating space through fakes and a lot of these off-ball moves, but don't forget about wraparounds, handoffs, and curls. Those are going to be some great ways that you can create space off the catch. Also, setting screens is another way that you create a lot of space if you really struggle with putting together some of these off-ball combinations. Now, I want to talk about when to cut, and this is really big because because I know a lot of you guys who play solo rec, this is what you're going to see a lot of times people just cutting towards the rim. So I want to actually just show you guys when is the proper time to cut towards the basket. Okay, if you are considering making a cut towards the basket, you need to look at two things and in order. The first thing is where is the defense? And if you look at the defense in this play, Draymond is cleared out of the paint. Al Horford comes up to set a screen and then you see tatum is moving over to the wing i obviously need to move anyway because tatum is coming over to where i'm at so that's the first thing i'm gonna consider is the fact that the paint is cleared 
The second thing is I'm going to look at where my defender is. Steph Curry is playing Drew Holiday too high up, too close. And again, if somebody is playing you that close or that high up, they cannot defend the backdoor cut. So again, remember to prioritize, to look at the paint, to look at where the defense is overall, but then look at your assignment. Lastly, before you make a decision to cut towards the basket, I will cover again a real tutorial in terms of getting open and wreck. Again, I just got to get my build together and all that other stuff. But this is basically the, the IQ of having a smart cut towards the rim or to be able to make a smart play and help your team instead of clogging up the paint and hurting people's ability to shoot or to make other plays. So I wanted to expand a little bit about using your combos or a lot of the animations we learned earlier against elite defenders. Uh, you gotta make them commit to something. So I wanna make Drew Holiday commit to backpedaling and he cuts off both of those uh, opportunities. And so then I'm gonna allow him to be kind of pushed. I'm thinking about pushing him further into the paint and then I'm gonna pop back out uh for the screen and as you see right there it's going to result in a bucket uh you also got to understand elite defenders their job is to take away your biggest strength so you might have to accept you're not going to have an open three all the time you might have to settle for a nice midi i'm not gonna lie that's that's good defense the guards and wing players are the only players that have off ball animations for getting open bigs and post players also need to learn how to counter being denied now, these animations are, again, relative to where the basketball is, but you typically are pushing up or down on the right stick to trigger these animations. Timing is the biggest factor because you're actively fighting for post positioning. If you want to bully your defender off of you, push the right stick towards him or up. But I found the spin counter to be the most consistent move and you have the added benefit of it setting you up perfectly for open dunk or alley-oop. To do this animation is pretty simple. All you have to do is wait for the post defender to be engaged with you and then rotate the right stick clockwise or counterclockwise and you will trigger your post counter spin. This is perfect for players like Zion. If you have somebody who is athletic and you wanna be able to get your build open, all you have to do is wait for the post defender to try to bump you or push you away. And then you're gonna use his body weight, his contact to spin off of him. And you should have, again, an open alley-oop or dunk. Now, I couldn't end this video without focusing on the off-ball defensive animations and talking about the off-ball pest badge. So you need to hold the right stick to the left or right, and that will extend the defender's hand and that will cause him to go into a deny stance if you hold l2 he'll face guard the shooter and this is going to make it much harder for them to catch the basketball at positions on the court that they're comfortable in so if they're inside player if you do this correctly they'll have to catch the basketball at the three-point line or further if they're a three-point shooter this might make them step out to a position that is just outside of their shooting range and force them to drive. You're not trying to hold the offensive player in place. That's not the goal of this. The goal of this animation or this feature is to simply make the catch a lot harder. Hey guys, if you guys could do me a big favor and please drop a like and comment the number 33 to let me know you made it this far into the video. And just let me know that you guys are really rocking with the content, whether it's the editing, the gameplay, or just the information. Uh, I really appreciate it. It really helps a small channel like mine grow and allows me to know which content that you guys wanna see more of. So if you wanna see more NBA 2K25 tutorials, dropping a like will definitely keep making that happen. Okay, back to the video. We have to talk about off ball pests. This badge is described as improving a player's ability to bump and harass the offense off ball. So any interaction where the defensive player has to either bump or hold the offensive player, this badge will kick in. So there are two animations that allow you to activate the off ball pest badge consistently, the hold or defensive engage animation where the defensive player will enter a deny stance, but will grab or hold onto the offensive player. And the other animation is a defensive bump. Both animations are easy to trigger. For the defensive engage, while standing next to the offensive player, hold L2. For a defensive bump, the offensive player has to be moving and then you need to hold L2. The key to consistently triggering the defensive bump is holding L2 after moving in front of the offensive player. The more you're in front of the offensive player, the better the animation you'll get. If you have a decent off-ball pass badge or simply the offensive player doesn't have a slippery off ball badge so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comment section below what you'd like to see from me next 
And if this is the first video you ever watched with me, I want to say thank you for choosing this video and watching all the way to the end. And I'll also ask that you please check out my last two guides, which covered left stick dribbling, as well as my defensive animation guides, which shows you how to play a little bit better on ball defense um, by using some of the special animations that are in 2K. Um, so like countering the drop step that is covered in that video. And I want to give a big shout out to this community. If you guys don't know, I have been dropping a lot of community questions and polls just so I could get some feedback and get an idea of what you guys want to see and what you guys really want so that we can kind of make better content together and that's what's been happening so i really want to thank you guys um for just helping me grow as a content creator and making better content as well as the growth of this channel so if you dropped a like a comment or you shared this video or shared any of my videos thank you guys i'm drizzy 93 peace